Suppose you're a lifeguard on the beach and you see a swimmer drowning in the ocean. You begin to run toward them and once you reach the water, you begin to swim. Since your swimming speed is likely less than your running speed, it's probably going to take you longer to close the distance in the water than it does on land. This implies that you might be better off running slightly in the wrong direction to spend more time traveling faster on land and less time traveling slower in the water, resulting in less time overall to rescue the swimmer. So if that's the case, should you maximize your time on the land and run as close to them as possible before you start swimming? Doing this actually increases the amount of time it takes to reach the swimmer because you're increasing the total distance that you travel. So where is the sweet spot that minimizes your rescue time? Let's use a computer to explore this problem. So here's the code that created the animation in that first minute of the video. We have our swimmer out at the upper right corner of the screen. We have our lifeguard starting at the lower left corner of the screen. The lifeguard is given two speeds, a land speed of three meters per second, where the lifeguard is booking it across the sand, and a swim speed of 1.75 meters per second, where we're still traveling as fast as we can in the water, but just not as fast as we can on land. Um, the lifeguard is going to head in two different directions. First, the lifeguard is going to head toward the uh, transition point, this transition X that we're controlling up here in line 12. And then the second angle is from the transition point to the swimmer. So first we head toward the transition point, then we head toward the swimmer. Um, and so we have two loops. We have one loop that moves the lifeguard at the land speed and one that moves the lifeguard at the swimming speed. And we saw that if we make several trials out of this, we can come up with some sort of minimum value of the time based on uh, the transition X value, but we'd like to be more systematic about it. So what I'd like to do is set up a loop to loop over all the values of transition X that we might be interested in. So let's think about the range of transition X values that we want to loop over. So we're going to say for transition X in range, our minimum value is going to be zero because we're obviously not going to uh, run at an angle upward to run more on the water than we do on the land. And we're not going to run any farther than the swimmer's position, 2.25. And then we just need a step size. Uh, let's go with 0.1 for starters. And so I've got this loop started here. Uh, I don't need this transition X here anymore. And so what I do is I take all the rest of the code and I select it and I hit tab so that it goes within that loop. Now the computer's going to tell me the time. I also want it to tell me the transition X values. And since I'm tired of typing that, let me hit control C to copy and control V to paste. And we'll do a little indicator here, transition X equals. So we got our transition X and our time. So there's a lot going on in this code. Uh, we're having to do the Runga, excuse me, we're having to do the Euler Cromer method twice. Um, but basically what we're interested in is the independent variable transition X and the dependent variable time here. So let's hit control two to run this. So here's our first trial with the transition X of zero. As you, as you saw before, we're going faster on the land than we are in the water. And at first, as we move over to the right with our transition X, our time decreases. We're eventually gonna hit a minimum and then this will start to increase like we saw earlier. So you can see at this point, we're starting to get less of a payoff with each increment of transition X. Now we're starting to get 1.9, 1.9, 1.9. So we're not seeing a whole lot of difference there. That's because as we get toward the minimum, the graph of this thing is starting to flatten out. Also, that's because our step size in time is 0 0.01. And so for us to get a more accurate value of the time, we need to decrease the step size there. Um, so we now know that our minimum is located somewhere in this range that's got all these 1.9s. So our minimum time is 1.9 something, um, and it's somewhere in between transition x equals 1.3 and transition x equals 1.8. So let's go back over to the code and let's refine this range a little bit. So let's go between 1.3 and 1.8. And uh, let's decrease our step size for transition x. Let's cut that in half so that we're taking smaller steps there. Let's also decrease our time step size so that we can get a more accurate answer for the time. So this is gonna give us a more accurate value for the time. 
The other change is going to give us a more accurate value for the transition x. Then we just need to increase the rate by the same amount. So let's increase the rate by a factor of 100. Control 2 to run. So now we're going to have a little bit smoother curve here. I mean, it's hard to call it smooth when it's uh, straight lines. Uh, but here you can see we get more digits out in our time because we're calculating it more accurately. And I think we just reached our minimum. We went from 8937 to 8931, then back up to 8932. So that gives us a minimum of 1.8931 seconds. So that's the minimum amount of time it's going to take us to get from the starting point to the swimmer. And that happens with a transition X of 1.55, somewhere in the, in the middle of this range here. And we could get these to be more accurate by continuing that process. But what I'd like to do in the next video is solve this problem algebraically and then compare the exact solution to the answer that we are getting out here. And we're also going to connect this to another very important problem in physics, which if you, if you look at this, you can probably recognize what that's going to be, but I'll leave the surprise for you for next time. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.